Hi everyone, I hope you're excited to play the Carbon Cycle Journey game. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play the game, uh, which I made in Scratch, and then also I'm going to show you how to complete the data table uh, so you can keep uh, track of your progress as you go through the game. And then afterwards, I'm going to give you some examples of uh, what it's like to go through the Carbon Cycle so we can learn a little bit about what's happening. Okay. I think it's really important that you do this by splitting your screen. So I'm gonna show you how to do that first. And so I'm gonna get me out of the way so you can see. And first thing I'm gonna do is in like Google or whatever internet browser you wanna use, I'm gonna bring up the game ahead of time. And I'm just gonna minimize that for now. Because the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna open the, the data sheet and then I'm gonna drag that window over to the right until this imaginary box appears. And when you see that, you can release your click and it'll uh, take up half the screen for that window now. And so that's really what we wanna do. And then we're gonna bring up our other window, the Carbon Journey game. And it looks kind of weird right now, uh, but once I hit that green flag button, it's gonna reposition a little bit. And you may have to play around uh, with your windows a little bit because these computers are a little bit different but ultimately you want something so that you can see both the game and the data sheet at the same time. Okay, so before we begin, let's be clear on what to record on the data sheet. Each turn you end up in a particular reservoir, which are those green dots on the game board. And so you're gonna select the reservoir from the drop down menu that activates whenever you're within the cell. So for example, after turn one, I want to identify what reservoir I'm in. I'm going to click, and when I click, notice how this drop down arrow appears to the right. Okay, you're going to want to click that drop down arrow to get access to all of the 13 different reservoirs that could be your possible answer. And you're just going to select whichever one you end up in. For right now, I'm going to go back. Okay, and then you will mainly type in your flux or the process that gets you to that reservoir uh, based off of what you experienced during the turn. And so uh, I left this so that you could type in freely what you wanted. You're gonna use the information in the game to come up with something. So if you wanna shorten it, make it a little bit more specific, whatever that you wanna do to make your learning more meaningful to you, you can type in there. And then you also notice over here to the right that there's a pie chart and it will automatically update as you enter your information as you go through the game. And we'll take a look at that at the end. In fact, it'd be really neat if you had a friend that could play along uh, with a separate game and then you can compare your results at the end to see if you got something similar or something really different. Okay, let's get started. You're gonna click on the green flag icon and our game piece is this black carbon atom currently positioned on the sun. The game asks which journey you want to take. This is actually a tricky question because it doesn't mean the game is going to be faster or slower. Uh, in fact, regardless of what you pick, you should at least go through 20 turns before you end. Uh, you could go more if you want and just keep typing your responses in the B column and it'll automatically update in, in the pie chart. It just, you won't be able to use the drop down menus anymore. What this question is actually asking you to do is, do you want to start somewhere in the fast carbon cycle loop, which occurs along the surface of the Earth, and particularly in the most widespread reservoir that, that exists, the atmosphere above the Earth's surface? Or if you want to start somewhere in the slower loop, which is deep within or just beneath the Earth's surface, and this also includes the ocean. It doesn't really matter too much which one you choose, as both loops are connected by certain processes that will link together and make up one entire carbon cycle. So you should expect to end up in both the slow loop at some point and the fast loop. So uh, on my data sheet, I'm going to, um, to, to mark my first reservoir here after I type in what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna do the fast reservoir for now. And that takes me straight to the atmosphere. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click there, bring up the, the drop down menu, click atmosphere. And now there's no flux for this first round because I'm just starting the game. So I, nothing happened to move me into the atmosphere other than just 
I decided to play the game. And so on my data sheet, I'm just going to leave this, uh, this blank for now. Okay, we're gonna roll the dice by clicking on it. And you may not be able to hear the sound in this video, but while you're playing, make sure you have the sound on while you do that. Um, and now that we've rolled, we're ready to start our next turn. So before I type in the number six and we actually play the game, I, I wanna give you a warning. You're gonna wanna pay attention to the process before you worry about the reservoir that you're going to. Okay, the process only exists for a short amount of time whenever the carbon atom is moving from one reservoir to another. So you wanna read what pops up in the text window first and remember it and type it in this box before you worry about what you're gonna do in the drop down box. Because if you miss that process, you're gonna, you're gonna end up not being able to have a sequence that makes sense when you're playing the game. And so the only way to fix that is you have to start the game entirely over because the game isn't programmed to go backwards and it doesn't have any memory of what you went through. And so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and type six and I'm gonna hit this check mark, which will move the game forward. And I'm gonna watch the chat box and see what happens. Now, this one is pretty, uh, different because there was no process that took place. Occasionally reservoirs uh, don't experience a process. And so, for example, if I'm a carbon dioxide molecule in the atmosphere, it's really likely that I'm going to be in the atmosphere for a long time. And so sometimes you will roll an option that makes you stay in that reservoir. Uh, and so I'm just going to type in the box over here for turn number two that I was I got here by staying in place. And I'm gonna change this to the atmosphere. Okay, let's see if we get any luckier on, the, on this next turn. So I'm gonna type okay to continue. And it's gonna say you're in the atmosphere. Roll dice basically again. So I'm gonna click. Oh, I hope it's a good number. We got a five. Okay, so remember, I'm gonna be watching for the process so that I can enter it in my data sheet. So five, check mark. Okay, here it says dissolving moves you into the ocean water. So dissolving is the flux or the process. I'm gonna type that in. So dissolving moved me to, and notice it shows you here, you are in the ocean water. That's the reservoir. So that's again, why it's important to do the reservoir last. Okay, so I've now been dissolved into the ocean. And it says, roll dice and report the number one through six again. Okay, this time I rolled a two, so I'll type in a two. Outgassing or exchange moves you in back into the atmosphere. Okay, great, we're back in the atmosphere again. So, outgassing. And I'm now in the atmosphere. And so right away, we're already seeing exactly why this loop is called the fast carbon cycle loop, because you end up back in this particular reservoir relatively quickly. Okay, let's keep playing just a little bit. Just to maybe demonstrate that a little bit more. I got another two, but this time I'm in the atmosphere. So I wonder where this is gonna take me. Photosynthesis happens. So I was absorbed by a, a plant on the land uh, for them to do photosynthesis for their energy. And now I'm stored in the plant. I become, I become part of the plant. And so I'm gonna pull from my drop down menu, land plants. All right, let's see how quickly I end up back in the atmosphere. So I'm gonna roll again. Got a six this time. So I typed in a six, let's watch for the process. Deforestation or combustion, whichever one you want, moves me to the atmosphere. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that I was actually a tree and I w went through deforestation. And so uh, I'm back in the atmosphere. Wow, already in the atmosphere. Let's, let's do a couple more rolls and, and see what else we've got in here. Okay, got a four this time. Oh, this time I'm getting an option. So it says choose A or B. Do you wanna go to ocean animals or do you wanna go to marine mammals? So. I want to go to marine mammals. I'm gonna type B. 
So respiration moves me into marine mammals. So just a note here, the dice blocks that are selected are actually based off the of probabilities and percentages of like you ending up in one of these reservoirs. So this is kind of inferring that I first was dissolved in the ocean, like what happened to us in, in this earlier turn. And then that animal actually breathed me in through their gills uh, it, while I was in the ocean. So it actually kind of put me in the ocean through that. So you can see it's, it, there's, an, there's an exchange here between the ocean and the atmosphere. And that's one of the links between the fast carbon cycle and the, the long carbon cycle or the, the slow one. Okay, so now that you know how to play the game um, and you've seen how, how easy it was to go back and forth to the atmosphere, uh, I don't wanna give away too much uh, with one example. So this was just an example of one route uh, through the fast carbon loop. Uh, the term fast again indicates time scale. So keep that in mind. Uh, okay, so now you're going to play 20 turns of the game, and I want you to share your results with anybody that you can. Try to get some people to, to play with you and see, see how, how things compare or how they're different. And then wait until you've done this before you check out the next video, because in the next video, I'm going to go into more depth uh, in the carbon cycle. And so try that out. Okay, thanks for watching.